Hey folks, how you doing? It is Sunday, June 4th here in CT, and I am starting to plant some of my uh, pots with annuals, except for pansies, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, I really don't recommend planting any of your, your potted annuals until after Memorial Day. Now, if you're at the garden centers and you see something you like, by all means, go ahead and buy them and, and just keep them watered until after the holidays. You just never know if there's gonna be like a windstorm, maybe a late frost, so better safe than sorry. With pansies, once the hot weather comes and it's really hot, humid, and, and oppressive, the plants, they're not gonna die, but they're gonna to start to look kind of ugly. Some people leave them in the ground, some people rip them out. I prefer to rip them out, but my wife likes to leave them in the ground. So we usually leave them in the ground. Just wanna briefly show you this nice pot. And it had a cocoa liner last year, but when the season was over, unfortunately the, the cocoa liner came out with the soil. This is what's known as uh, sphagnum moss. And I got this at Home Depot. It's, it's really not a big bag. Uh, it was probably about $10. But what you do is you just get a you just get a five gallon bucket or a bucket, dump the bag in the bucket, soak it for a while, and then you can take the sphagnum moss and kind of weave it in the basket. So um, for a basket this size, uh, which is a which is a pretty good size basket, it took two full bags of the sphagnum moss for maybe twenty bucks and a little bit of time you can get your planter uh, going again. The same guys that used to just grow for garden centers are now growing for BJ's and Stop and Shop and Big Y. As long as the plant looks healthy, it's perfectly fine. As far as your pots go, I prefer uh, clay and ceramic to the newer plastic ones. Don't get me wrong, the newer plastic ones are a lot cheaper and lighter. You know, those of us in the trade like the way these clay pots will get moist, even though the sun's shining on the pot, it won't, it won't get overheated and then spread that heat into the roots. Assuming you don't leave it out all winter and, and have it freeze or drop it, uh, they will last pretty much forever if you take care of them. Most pots are gonna have a large hole in the center or maybe several holes. So what you wanna do is just grab, you know, I have old pot shards I'll put in there. Uh, you, or you, if you have like a, a just a big flat rock, just find a flat rock and, and put the flat rock in there. But what you want to do is block that hole so that the water, you want the hole to still be there, you just don't want it to be as giant as that. Because what will happen is all your soil is going to wash out until you have roots in the pot. So just, just put something over the pot the hole in the pot before you fill it with soil. I'll see miracle grow in blue bags and yellow bags. A lot of them have fertilizer built into them, although I still end up fertilizing. We water these plants so often that fertilizer really leaches out quickly. I can buy the same potting mix at the local garden centers, at the local supermarket, at the local hardware store. This bag here was, uh, I think it was a little under $17, and I had just enough to fill uh, these four pots. A lot of people will actually overfill their pots and when you water them, the water will end up draining out and all the soil. But what I like to do is leave a nice two to three inch depth. Uh, I prefer to go too deep because it leaves more room for the, the water to, to soak in. So in a month when these are like a foot tall and, and spread all out, in the middle of a heat wave, I can just come by and you know, generously fill this container and let the water soak in, as opposed to if I only had like a half an inch of space and I tried to fill it, the water would, en would end up leaking out. So that's something that I, I really do like to do is, is actually go a little bit too far down. So with these pots um, and with these pots, I usually keep my soil level right at the bottom of this rim so I've got this whole area here, this whole area here, to be the reservoir for water. Put all your pots over in the grass and fill your pots over there. Fill them just a little bit lower than they need to be because when you, when you start to put the plants in, you're gonna raise the soil a little bit. So what I'll do is fill the pots, bring them to my truck at a higher height where it's more pleasant to work, and then I, I keep a separate bin here uh, with potting soil in it 
So whenever I have a little bit extra in the bag, I'll just dump it in here. So I've got some potting soil ready to go. You really want to avoid doing all this planting like on your, on your nice patio or, you know, the front of the house, because by the time all is said and done, you're just going to make a mess of, of everything. Uh, once you spill a little bit of soil, get it wet. So I, I try to do as much of the work away from where I'm doing the planting and then bring the pots over. One thing I tried over here and it didn't quite go the way I thought it would, but I still do kind of like it, is if I'm putting pots in the garden, I like to put a piece of bluestone there and you level out the bluestone and then every year you know exactly where to put those pots. And it also helps to keep some of their dirt off from, uh, from when the rain splashes the dirt up. Any of my regular viewers know I used to have three just giant elephant ears here. And unfortunately, I, they were so huge, I decided not to overwinter them. And almost immediately I missed them already. So I did go to Lowe's and I bought these tubers. And what I'm gonna do is, is just bring the soil level up to about here until I actually see them start growing um, before I actually uh, fill the rest of the pot. I'll only fill them till about here with soil. And then that way I have a large reservoir where I can just come by and, and top off the water and keep moving. I really love these begonias and I'm not sure if these are tuberous begonias or Rieger begonias. I'm not that big of a, an annual guy but I know they do great in deep shade. So that's where we're gonna put them. Where the plant connects to the rhizome is often uh, quite weak. So like with impatiens, I will try to, to kind of scratch the roots apart. But when I plant these guys, I will be very, very, very gentle because almost yearly, if I have, I only have like two pots of these a year, but almost yearly, one of them will invariably break off. Don't be afraid to use water-soluble fertilizer. The box recommends every seven to 14 days, and there's a different ratio for indoor plants and uh, outdoor plants. But with outdoor plants, it's one and a half tablespoons, the large end of the enclosed scoop per one and a half gallons of water. Uh, and for best results, soak the base of the plant every seven to 14 days. Basically once a week, I will just put one scoop into a watering can and then just go ahead and water all my outdoor plants. Water them until the water starts to drip from the bottom of the pots. Obviously, if they turn all green and get really tall and stringy, you're using too much. But if your plants aren't just taken off, don't be afraid to use the fertilizer. I just want to take a moment and just show you my pansies. But I do water them whenever the ground is dry. These have easily been fertilized three, if not four times this year. So that's going to do it for this one, folks. I just wanted to share some tips I've learned over the past 30, 40 years. You know, growing annuals, it's really not that hard. Give them plenty of fertilizer. Make sure you keep them watered, especially by mid to late summer when it gets really hot and those plants are big, you may need to water those plants twice a day sometimes, once in the morning, and then if someone's home mid-afternoon or when you get home from work, hit them again. But uh, they really get thirsty by the end of the summer. But uh, anyways, folks, uh, thanks a lot for watching and I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care.